Today, lovely teachers, we're joined by Jenny Walker. So Jenny was born in Southampton and she now lives in Lincolnshire, where she has a successful teaching practice. She composes piano music and many of you may have seen her compositions around either on Piano Pronto or Sheet Music Plus or different places like that. She writes songs and arrangements for her ladies singing group as well, which is really fun. And she plays most genres of music, folk, jazz, big band, popular music and classical. One fun little fact about Jenny is that she's actually of Irish heritage. So we have that in common. I'm so excited for you to meet Jenny and find out a bit more about her composing process. So welcome, Jenny. Can you tell us a little bit about your teaching studio? My teaching studio is Bijou. I have, it's very crowded in here. I have a piano behind me, which you can see. And I also have to the left of me a very nice clavinova. So, you know, we can do two pianos and everything else. If you're asking for a cello, the cello has to go out into the hall, but everything else gets done in here. Oh, wow. <laughs> we do a lot in here. Yeah, nice and busy. And roughly how many students do you have? I have 45 at school. Yeah. And then I've got 30 here. So I have a lot. Wow. <laughs> Are any of those groups? No. No, okay. I always like to ask that when people say a big number because yeah, I'm like, it yeah. means a lot different strict, if you say they're all in groups strict, of 10. Have, yeah, I have a strict rule. Nobody is an hour. It's all 30 minutes and it just seems to work. Fantastic. So you're super busy. When did you first get into composing? How did that add on to your portfolio, as it were? Well, I always did a little bit. And then back in um, 2000, um, quite a long time ago, I think it was about 10 years ago, I, I saw a competition because I joined EPTA because I'd become redundant at King's School for, I was a computing teacher and they made me redundant and I thought, well, what am I going to do? So I devoted more time to music and I saw this competition online, I having joined EPTA and I thought, oh, I'll have a little go and I won it. <laughs> I had little bits and pieces on my cabin over and it was a piece about the mountains of Morn and they, a fictitious stream coming down from the top and going into the sea at Newcastle. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Uh, so what was that? Well, I hope that's what they're hoping to do with that composition set up by EPTA, that they inspire people to compose things that otherwise they might not have composed. They so that's do, fantastic. But I, I don't believe they run the competition anymore, which is a real shame. But um, I did the one the next year and I got second. And then I did the one the year before, uh, year after, and I got um, less than second. So I thought, oh, it's going downhill now. So, <laughs> so that was my main success. And I'm really quite proud of it. And then I was taken on by um, Jennifer Eckland of Piano Pronto, who liked it. And we renamed it because of some difficulties, so I won't go into that. And we renamed it Morn Passage. Fantastic. And so... it's been great because I've had feedback from American students and the teachers have said, would you like to see a video of my student playing it? Oh, yes, please, you know, because that's something we're a little bit reticent about here. But um, it's been lovely to see. Yeah, that's amazing. So that's kind of where you got into it in this iteration as you said you always composed yeah, a bit yeah. so it's expanded a lot from there <laughs> and you've composed a lot more since i was looking at some of the lists on your site i have yeah and also because jennifer's so busy i decided to have a look at other places where i might some produce some music and arrangeme.com has been quite useful not only for original pieces but the things that really sell well are original songs, which have been arranged by me, and I can sell them on and also reproduce them for my choir. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. But, yeah, as well as piano pieces, I do other things now, which is nice. And I run an instrumental group, and I also arrange for that. Yes, that's incredible. So it keeps you with a nice variety. When you're going yeah. to write a piece for piano, where does the inspiration usually come from? Do you get inspiration from things your students need or does it usually come from nature like it did in that particular case or where does it start? I, well like a lot of musicians I have notes going on in my head all the time. <laughs> I think that's where it comes from and if I can't record it at the time I tend to write them down so I don't forget them. I, I mean Morn Passage began like that. I had lots of little snippets recorded on my clavinova and I just sort of thought oh if I change key I can put that together with that and it just it grew from there. So just a habit of kind of oral noodling, noodling going on in your head. 
That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. 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 And sometimes words, I mean, one of my choir members gave me some words for a song and I said, okay, I'll see what I can do with it. And I made a song for our choir through it. And so I put her name on the credits as well. And she's really quite pleased with it because she doesn't, she doesn't write music. So, um, but the words were lovely. So I put that to music and, uh, you know, so it depends which way it comes. Sometimes it's words first, sometimes it's tune first. Yeah, you mentioned there recording little snippets on your clavinova and that being your first way of recording it. Sometimes or sometimes you're writing it down, but a lot of the time you're recording actually the audio. So that's the handiest way for you to kind of keep track of these things? Oh, yeah, it is actually, because as you probably know, I mean, from that I can take my stick out and I can put it in my computer and put it into Sibelius and see what happens. And I often muck about with things like that and then just little snippets and they grow into big snippets. Yeah, I think that's fantastic for people to hear because I've talked to several composers over the years and I'd say the most common answer I hear is that they have manuscript paper yeah, and that's where their first it. jotting ideas Sometimes, down. Yeah, sometimes I do. If I'm at school and a, a student has missed a lesson, sometimes if something comes to me, I quickly grab a patch of uh, manuscript paper and I write it down. And sometimes that works. And then I put it in my bag and it gets lost. <laughs> <laughs> but and then I find it again and you know it just depends on how it happens because of course we all have busy lives as well so you know I, I mean I won't devote, devote all my life to just composing so you know it just it's as and when really yeah but I like how I can I mean here in your voice your kind of attitude to it which I really like I think often when people first get into something composing or business ideas or anything really they can be so attached to the idea stage. They can be so focused on, I must capture all these ideas and they're so precious. And one of my general views, you could tell me if you disagree with me, is that ideas are actually cheap. Like the little ideas that come to you, they'll keep coming. If you keep capturing them, you'll get more and more and more. So it doesn't sound like you think it's a tragedy when it does get crumpled in your bag and forgotten. And you don't stress yourself out about trying to make sure you capture every single idea. You just capture them as they come to you and then see how they can piece together. Have I got the right I mean, kind of idea li- there? You'd be lying in the bath and the same idea comes through and then you have to get out of the bath to wrap it down. <laughs> but um, I mean, Mozart and people like that, they used to take um, little notebooks for ideas that came into their heads. So I, I suppose I'm doing more or less the same thing. And it depends whether I'm near an electronic device or not. Yes. but. You know, these things float back to us if they're important, you know? Absolutely, yeah. From there, you mentioned you might combine them, change the keys of some of them, see how they could fit together and things like that. What does that kind of refining process look like? At that stage, are you in music notation software and kind of playing around with things? Usually. I'm usually in Sibelius with the headphones on by then. Sometimes not. And sometimes it's just in my head. I think, oh, that doesn't sound quite right. I think it needs to go up a little smidgens. So I put it up a smidgens. And yeah. chopping and changing where things go and things like that? Mm-hmm. It's any which way, really. I don't have a set method of composing. I've read about people's methods and yeah, fine if it works for them. But I bet they have other methods as well. Yes. Yeah, there's always many ways to do things. That's why I'm always curious to hear about the process. Yeah. Yeah. I don't quite know sometimes how I do it. But we've got a a song. We always sing at um, the end of a concert with my little choir. And we call it Fa La La. And it is, those are the words, apart from a little midsection. And then we get the audience to join in the Fa La La bit. And then we have a stop and go sign. It's great fun. And I literally composed it while I watched Coronation Street. It just came into my head. And I just wrote it down, wrote the words, wrote the music and thought, yeah, that'll do. (laughs) Fantastic. So for those outside of the UK and Ireland who might be listening, Coronation Street is a soap. It's a regular TV show all the time, all the time. (laughs) So that's that's amazing. And it sounds like a super fun ending for your concerts too. Yes. Yeah, it's become our traditional ending. And when when I say now, I get up and say, right, now, you all know what's coming, don't they? And they all go, fa la la. (laughs) Yes. Oh, that's so fun. I think of something different soon, but it makes it fun. Yeah, absolutely. I love the interaction as well. So how about your students? Do you ever get them to compose or encourage them to compose in your lessons? Uh, Some of them compose at school. And if 
somebody's having trouble with, say, note reading, um, one good way I have found is to actually write down some well-known tunes to see if they can decipher them first of all. And I say, right, OK, you write your own tune. And they do come back with some. Yes, and it helps, helps with the uh, sight reading and everything. Absolutely. Students writing down music can also reveal to us things that they don't understand, that it kind of appeared they did, but once they start writing them down, mm. you realise, oh, they're not really getting how those notes relate to each other, or how it all works. Exactly, exactly. But if they choose something they know, often that's the way. And then, you know, for the bass clef, we can actually transpose it down an octave, and then they see how it relates. Yes, wonderful. So, yeah, yeah, we do a lot of that. But as and when, I don't make it part of my curriculum, per se, but it does creep in. So what is part of your curriculum or your standard lesson? How do your lessons look? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we usually concentrate on one or two pieces. Plus, if it's Trinity, we do exercises. And if it's not Trinity, we do scales, that sort of thing. Sometimes oral, it depends on what stage they're at. I mean, if they're ready for an exam, we do, we do a lot of oral work and a lot of sight reading. But um, otherwise, it's mainly trudging through the pieces in an enjoyable fashion. <laughs> <laughs> in a non-trudging way. <laughs> Not a trudging way. Yeah, yeah, super. And so how about your arrangements then? I saw a number of arrangements listed on your site. How do you decide which songs you want to arrange? Is it requests from people? Is it just things that take your fancy? Sometimes requests from the choir. I mean, the choir is a big part of my life now. Um, I formed it about seven years ago now. We're up to 15 and we absolutely love it. Things like lollipop. I mean, that was just wanting an a cappella version. Absolutely. We sang it somewhere and it was a success. And I thought, hey, here we go. Only you. Yes. So that, that was had to be done as well. Things like that can be done a cappella. And I absolutely love it because it means that we could perform it anywhere. Other things, um, I mean, California Dreaming was just, I don't know how it came to me, but we always start the concerts now with that. At their request, not mine. And they always want to start that. They say, oh, it's our trademark. We've got to start with that. I don't know why. It's just any tangible song, really. And you've got to be careful because we don't have a drummer. Not that we need one, but we don't have a drummer. We have a bass player. We've got two guitarists and me and a flautist. And so we're very lucky. Yeah. Super. So how does that process look different from composing? Obviously, you're not starting with your own ideas, but in terms of playing around with the arrangements and how you're going to set it together, how does that look? Well, you have to think about the range of voices for a start and how many voices you have, what instruments you have. I usually start with piano and then add embellishments for guitar because one of our guitarists, she loves to play, but she's a strummer rather than meticulous fingers. So I have to think about that. And our bass player is extraordinarily good. She plays for jazz bands and everything, so we're lucky to have her. So I think of a good bass part for her because otherwise I'm scared that she'll get bored. <laughs> But no, it usually works. Yeah. So you're sort of inspired then by the guardrails, as it were, like often with composing as well or anything really improvising, it's good mm. to have some constraints in place because then that yeah. can inspire your creativity within that. So you have a guitarist that's at this level or likes to play this way and a bassist who wants mm. to do this. And mm -hmm. then you have a flautist, yeah. so you have to in include that line as well. So Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you got to think of everything. So. And you've also got to think of time constraints. I mean, some of the songs go on quite a bit, the original version, so I shorten them, whatever, because yeah. it's my version. Yeah, exactly. I'm no arranger at all, but for our concert that we're doing this spring, we're doing a colour theme, so every piece just has a colour in the title. That's our uh -huh. basic theme. <laughs> and we always start with a group, an ensemble piece of some sort with me and the other teachers who work here. So at the moment we have two. So I needed a trio and it just popped into my head that we had to do 99 Red Balloons. Like I was just determined. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. <laughs> so, so I searched high and low, I feel like, but I didn't find any kind of suitable arrangement or even starting point. So I had to write it myself. But yeah, very specific. OK, I want yeah. it to be two minutes, you know, not three because I don't like what one good source is MIDI files. Some of them are not very good, but most MIDI files, if you bring them into Sibelius and then you can play about with them. And I always check with YouTube as well. And some songs that I haven't got MIDI arrangements, I have to go through YouTube and go one note at a time. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. And I recently joined a, joined a pop band. Quite often they'll say, oh, we'd like to do this song, this song. And I, th- I think, well, I know it, but I don't know how to do it, if you see what I mean. Yeah. I know the chords, but I have to listen for the actual piano part because they like to stick as far as they can to the originals. And that can be quite a challenge. So often I put it into MIDI file first and then put it, export it into PDF and then put it onto Fourscore and then I've got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in that case, it was simple to figure out by ear because it is, <laughs> it's very repetitive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've just been on a jazz course for the second time. Really loved it. And it's the Suffolk Jazz School. I'm just going to book for the next year. That is a lot of improvisation, a lot. When I did it last year, it was don't do that bit, don't play that bit because the bass player is doing that. Don't play that bit because the saxophonist is playing that. And I'm thinking, well, what on earth do I play? So basically, you look at the chords and you add twiddly bits. That's what you do. <laughs> I, I've, I've got into the habit of it now. So that actually really helps with the compositional side of things. Yeah. I love that way of describing it because I took jazz lessons for a little while myself. And really, that was one of my takeaways was like, you're understanding what else is already going on. So if you're on your own as a pianist, mm-hmm. you have to be the bassist and the, you know, you have to be all those parts in yeah. your two hands. Yeah. And then you start eliminating them <laughs> from your hands once yeah. you have the actual instruments exactly. there. So exactly. I think understanding it in that way really transforms how you think about what your role there's is. A brilliant, there's a brilliant jazz keyboardist on, on site there. Oh my goodness. I don't know how he does it. And he makes everything sound so professional, even if he's not seen it before. And uh, oof. so that's something to aspire to. Absolutely. So, and I had a very good report this year, so I'm really pleased with myself. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Well, this has been a lovely chat. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing a bit about your composing process and arranging and all that good stuff. It's been a pleasure. It's lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that interview and that you'll check out Jenny's music. It really is wonderful. It's been a pleasure to have her as part of one of our concept collections and her music on all the different sides, Piano Pronto and Sheet Music Plus and different places you can find Jenny is all wonderful. So I hope you'll take a look and let us know if you have any questions over on Instagram or in the comments here.